Welcome to creating a building key for your Revit title block. We will first need a 2D boundary to define the exterior of our building to be used for our key. If you have a boundary in a DWG file already, go ahead and save that as a new name. In this instance, we're going to export out a 2D view of the boundary of the building to a DWG file. I'm going to use the gross area boundary for the boundary of my key plan. I duplicated an existing view, cleaned up everything except for the boundary, and now I will export it out to a DWG file. Under our Revit application pull down, we can use our export to DWG file format, follow the defaults, and save the file to a location that we desire. Once we have our DWG exported and saved, we can open up our Revit family template file to load our DWG file into. Open whichever template file that you would like to start with. Under the Insert tab, we'll import the CAD file and choose the one that we desire. I would leave that as black and white. Our scale and our center to center is not going to matter. And you'll notice my boundary is quite large, so we'll need to adjust the scale. By selecting our DWG file, we can go into our edit type and adjust the scale. Once you've adjusted the scale and repositioned your key boundary outline, we will go ahead and add in some detail lines to define, further define the boundaries of our key. Using our detail lines in our family, we'll go ahead and draw those across as needed. When completed, we'll go ahead and select Modify so that we can go ahead and provide and um, put in an infill for each one of the separate areas. Back on our Home tab, we'll use the Fill Region tool to fill in each sector. If you don't have a solid filled region, you can come in and duplicate and create one with a solid fill before getting started. So we'll change our name and then we'll pick a new fill. If you would choose to choose, if you would like to change the color, you can choose a different color also. So we now have a new solid fill. I'll go ahead and use my pick tool. Go ahead and pick around my boundaries. Clean those up. And when done, say finish. We'll go through and assign one of those for each sector before we move on to parameters. Once you have all of your infills defined within the shell of your key, we'll go ahead and create our parameters so that we can control which area or sector is displayed at the time. Next, we'll go ahead and define our parameters so that we can assign them to our key. We'll select family types so that we can create our new parameters. We can add parameters to our template file. I'm going to set up one for each sector. You can name them whatever you want. The key factors are that you set this to be a yes, no, so that we can toggle it on and off. Where you group it is completely up to you, and you'll want it to be an instance parameter. We'll go ahead and set this up each sector. Once our sectors are all created, we're ready to start assigning those to our different filled areas. Start by selecting a filled area that you want to attach a parameter to. In Properties, beside Visible Visibility Setting, we'll select the small button 
and choose which parameter we want to control it. So since that is my B sector, I'll go ahead and assign that as B. We'll continue to assign the rest of the sectors. When I'm done assigning my sectors, I'm going to go ahead and put in my text. Using your text tool, go in and define each one of your sectors and adjust the text height as needed. At this point, we're going to go ahead and open up a practice project that we can load our key and our template file into. Once we have our new project file available, we're going to go ahead and insert our family into our project. With both our new sample project and our title block with our embedded key available, we're going to activate our title block family and load that into our project. Now we're going to create a couple of new sheets and show that our title block has our embedded key available. Under our sheets, we'll go ahead and create a new sheet, choose the title block sheet that we've added our keynote to, and you'll see now our keynote shows up with all areas filled in. But when we select our title block, we can now scroll down and you'll see that our different sectors have been set up so we can turn them on and off as needed. I've also set one up that if I want to turn the key off completely, I can turn the entire key off. Now you'll see that sectors E and D are only displayed, and if I turn off the other, I now have just one sector displayed. I have created four new sheets. Each have their own key on them. I can control each of them independently of the other, if I would like. Select my title block, and then I can come in and turn off which areas I don't want to have in my key. I'm simply selecting the title block, Selecting our title block and going into our properties and then adjust, adjusting what parameters we want to have displayed on or off. If you would like to have no key at all, then I can simply turn off all of my check marks and the key disappears. With just the boundary displayed, it shows just the letters in the boundary. It's just another key that can be set up. Um, within your parameters. Well, that concludes creating a building key in your Revit title block. Thank you very much.